G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy for another edition of Just The Tips. This time, the round five version, this time in America, this time standing up. Still getting used to the new setting, but it's good to be here. Now I've got to tell you, I've had a tech nightmare since I got here, since I landed in America. I got like logged out of every single app that I'm logged into. That was an absolute nightmare. My banking app stopped accepting payments, which was great. And then I sit down today and open Squiggle and the software I usually use to record it just isn't working today. Got nothing to do with being in America. I'm just having an awful run of luck with this stuff. So so this video will be without squiggle, but it will be back as soon as I can get it. My tipping went well this week. I got nine correct tips. Somebody pointed out I tipped all the favorites last week. Um, I'm glad that I did that. I got nine out of nine. Um, fairly comfortable round of tipping. I did say that about the previous week and I did horrific. So it shows how much I know. Uh, but we'll go through all the competitions that True Footy has going. We have a members tipping competition. We have a general tipping competition. And we have a fantasy comp as well. So if you're not part of any of these leagues and you'd like to be, it's not too late. You can go to the description of this video and find everything you need. So some really interesting results here with the competitions we've got going here. So the winner of the round of the members competition was a two-way tie and that was between Yo Duashui and Hillsley 74 with nine correct tips and a margin of five. So well done to those two. I'd also like to shout out two new members, Trevor Bauer and Lockman Gaming. Thank you very much for supporting the general guys. You guys are absolute legends. Uh, let's go to the general tipping winner of the round. Now this was a 17-way tie. If I'm not, if I'm not like drunk. I'm looking at this. 17 people got nine correct tips and a perfect margin. That is absurd. I couldn't possibly write all those people down. So well done to all those guys. Like that, that is sensational. The leader of the members tipping competition is Chief Wardo with 31. And the general tipping leader is Christiani with 32. And I think that's the first time I've seen that name. And for the second straight week, we got Darcy Perkins winning the True Footy Fantasy League competition with an average of 20.55. So well done, Darcy. Absolutely killing it with third degree Hearns. If you're someone who's always wanted to start investing, but has found it difficult with the current pressures of cost of living, thankfully now there is an easy way to get started. New Venture Wealth is helping everyday Australians gain instant access to their superannuation so they can invest in assets like cryptocurrency, shares, and property. They simplify the process and guide you on how to set up a self-managed super fund, allowing you to instantly access your superannuation and start investing right away. And the best part is you can use your superannuation balance for all the setup costs of your very own self-managed super fund. Getting started is as easy as visiting the New Venture Wealth website with the link below. You can book a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of their team, or if you prefer, you can call them directly on 1300 050 939 for more information. Now there is an added bonus here because if you are a True Footy subscriber, you can use the discount code 20 off when you complete your online application. I would highly recommend visiting their website. Like I said, link in the description below, or if you prefer, you can call them directly and you can speak to a consultant who can help you better understand what's involved. Great, let's get into round five. We've got, uh, you know, what should on paper sort of be a really good clash between Melbourne and Brisbane at the MCG. I say on paper, obviously, if you look at it last year and the year before, we had some really good clashes between these two sides. I reckon the last time they met at this ground was that game that Melbourne came back um, when they really had no right to win that game, to steal the win. Brisbane faltered. They've been faltering a little bit this season. Of course, kind of got their season back on track with a big juicy win over North Melbourne, get a bit of percentage back as well. Because that the circuit breaker, there's a lot of noise about Brisbane Lions at the moment. Uh, I think this will be a really tough test and Melbourne has had back-to-back -back weeks in Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. They knocked off Adelaide some quite easily. They were too good for the power of the week before. Now they're back in Melbourne and against a Brisbane Lions side that we don't have a lot of trust in at the moment. So I'm feeling like this game is probably a fairly simple tip. Uh, you'd be a brave man to tip Brisbane. I'm going to tip Melbourne to win this game by 27. Then we've got the Bulldogs and Essendon. Uh, the Bulldogs form line is pretty solid. You know, I thought they looked pretty good against West Coast, um, you know, in terms of their pressure and consistency of effort. Then followed that up with a narrow loss to Geelong, which is a tough game. And that game really could have gone either way. Geelong are a good side at the moment. I think they will be a tougher test than Essendon will be. Essendon have been a little bit all over the place. And I say that respectfully, I think we've seen some some good things definitely and what are they two and two even in their loss against Sydney you know that they, they were pretty good but against the power I thought uh, you know they got well dismantled look it is a tough fixture it is a tough fixture but I do think that Essendon has gone to Adelaide Oval and played the power and put in a better performance in years where Essendon weren't great and Port Adelaide were so still a disappointing result now do Essendon have what it takes to knock off the Bulldogs I actually think they do I, I think they do it just depends which Essendon comes out but on balance I think the Bulldogs have clearly been better they look like a top eight side to me you know over time that the result between them and Geelong will be more revealing you know we we're still getting a read on Geelong obviously but they haven't lost a game yet and I think the dogs put up a good fight so I think if you go with logic here I think the Bulldogs should be far too strong for Essendon 
I reckon this will be a six goal win. I'll say uh, I'll say the Bulldogs by 34. We've got GWS and St Kilda next. This is an interesting one. I think St Kilda beat them this time last year. That being said, that being said, St Kilda were probably in better form this time last year. And GWS, um, you know, have, have kind of transformed since about round 15 of last year, no doubt. So the Giants had a pretty good resistance from Gold Coast, I thought. Like, Gold Coast did better in that game than I expected. The Giants have been cruising. They're undefeated at the moment. Haven't had the toughest run of fixtures since their first win over Collingwood to start the season. North Melbourne, West Coast, Gold Coast have been three of their other wins. And uh, I still think they are pretty much one of the best teams of the competition. I don't mean to undersell them. But this will be a much more stern test when you factor in as well St Kilda beat Collingwood. So this could be the toughest fixture of the year. And I feel like they're patchy at Monica. On the other hand, I feel like St Kilda has been a little lackluster in the last two weeks. Uh, compared to you know the performance against Collingwood, I don't think they've backed that up particularly strongly. I still think they're a good side, absolutely. But I just don't think the last two weeks they'd be particularly happy with. Obviously losing to Essendon and then following that up, um, you know, had to come from behind against a Richmond side who we're still getting a read on. But to be fair, they did come back and win. And that shows resilience, even if it wasn't their best, most polished performance. So... Uh, this will be a really good game. I actually think this is a bit more 50-50 than simply saying the Giants. That being said, I think the Giants are better. And therefore, I'll go with a narrow win by 12 points to GWS. Carlton v Adelaide. On paper, this game at Marvel, at the start of the season, would have looked like a really red-hot game. And it could still be, but it would rely on Adelaide really lifting to a bar that they have not demonstrated this season. It's been really disappointing. You know, 0 and 4, most of the time you're going to count seems out as a possibility of playing finals. They just don't look good either. Carlton are a tough test at the moment as well. Um, so last week, obviously, a little bit lucky to get the win over Fremantle. Tough battle. Uh, for the most part, Carlton haven't put a foot wrong, but I do think, obviously, if things go slightly different in that game, they would be coming off a loss right now. That being said, at Marvel Stadium, they should be the much stronger side against an Adelaide that has been disappointing, who really needs to stem the bleeding of this season. Even if this week's not a W for Adelaide, I really feel like this is an opportunity to bring back a bit of belief, at least make this close. They've got the injury concerns at the moment, you know, doubts around their midfield mix, but there's no reason they can't give this game a good shake. Um, so I hope that they do. That being said, I can't imagine a world where this version of Adelaide beats Carlton, uh, even at Marvel Stadium. So I'm going to say the Blues win this by healthy 34 points, factoring in as well, Adelaide are not good on the road. So 34 points, I hope it's closer. Gold Coast versus Hawthorne at, uh, I think it's People's First Stadium now it's called. And this one is in kind of more of an interesting one, actually, in terms of who will win. I really don't know who to pick. I think Gold Coast were pretty good against GWS last week. And I think Hawthorne, after their first three weeks of the season, have turned a little bit of a corner, looking a little bit better. You know, to make a comeback against the Cats when the game was almost over at quarter time, um, that showed resilience and character in that team. And, and then to follow that up by a big comeback late against Collingwood as well in a game where, you know, on paper, it looked like it was just about over. So that gives me reason to believe they could be a tricky customer here for Gold Coast, who I would have thought was the favorite going into it and probably might still tip them. But I'm actually thinking this could be would you call it an upset of the round? A Hawthorne that much of an underdog? Would you call it an upset if they win? Probably not. I'm actually really tempted to hit tip Hawthorne here. And I think I'm going to change it on the fly. I think I decided before I was going to tip Gold Coast, but I've got this feeling that Hawthorne will take the momentum the last couple of weeks in a game that's a little bit more winnable on paper. Gold Coast should equally be looking at this thinking this is a game we cannot lose and should not lose and will not lose. But I've got a funny feeling Hawthorne's going to knock them off. So... Yeah, I'm just going to read into my gut feel there and say Hawthorne win this by seven points. Wow, people do not agree with me. On the ESPN footy tipping app, it says 92% of tipping Gold Coast. So maybe this is a massive underdog here. Then we've got Port Adelaide and Fremantle at Adelaide Oval. This one should be interesting on paper. I think Fremantle looked pretty good. Again, very unlucky not to win that game. I think it's hilarious as an Eagles fan what happened. But if we're reading into form lines, yeah, you've got to give credit credit for Fremantle being in a great position to win that game. Combination of a you know bad umpiring call, followed up by perhaps a careless mistake by Jordan Clark. The, the, that riff free kick, the descent free kick is correct, but the ball probably should never have been there in the first place. So also super harsh, I got to say, super harsh that a descent free kick doesn't go back to the center after the goal, if the goal counts, the ball probably should go back to the center for a free kick. Having the free kick right in front of goal, I'm sure it's written in the rules. So not a massive complaint. I just think that's a little bit bizarrely unfair. Not just on Fremantle, on, on any team in that situation. I think that's overly harsh. But anyway, I digress. Fremantle will have belief. It's been a, a solid, I'll, I'll say it's been a 
good without being an amazing opening start to the season. I think they're still doing a lot of things right. Their contest stuff is really good. They've got some individual stars playing well. Their back lines look rock solid. They've been hard to score against uh, without looking polished like a real top team yet. So that can still change over time and they can build belief. And I think they will have belief in this game. That being said, they're coming up against a really tough opponent on their home deck. And historically, Fremantle don't play well at this ground against Port Adelaide. Now, maybe this will be different. Maybe this will be different. But I do factor that in, and that, that does impact my tipping. This is Fremantle's toughest test of the year so far, I would say. Like, we know that Port Adelaide's good. In round one, we assumed Brisbane was good. We also know that Carlton's good. The, the difference here being Port Adelaide is a genuine home team here. And they've looked really good. Connor Rosie was amazing last week against Essendon. And they haven't really done too much wrong this entire season, Port Adelaide. Other than the fact, you know, not put their scores on the board against the Ds. So I, I think I'm pretty confident Port's going to win here. If if Fremantle get close or even win this game, then they will even further go up in my estimations. I said that about the Carlton game. If they got close, they'll go up in my estimations. They did. Fair play. I think this is a tougher test, but I think they'll fall short this week. So I'll say Port Adelaide by 26 points. Next, we've got Geelong and North Melbourne, an undefeated side against a winless side. Geelong at GMHBA for a struggling team is a tough fixture. I empathize with you North fans. I, I know West Coast have that in the final round this year. And, you know, not a happy hunting ground for North in recent times as well. I think one of their lowest scores ever was kicked at that ground. So, tough opponent here. Geelong are good. Like, just we need to all accept that. Geelong are a good team this year. And beating the Bulldogs last week was further validation of that. They've looked rock solid all year. And the GMHBA are a strong side. I think this is going to be... A tough day for North Melbourne. Um, they're just running out of steam a little bit. Well beaten by the Brisbane Lions. And again, for a couple of weeks in a row, exposed a little bit for their short back line with some key forwards getting a hold of them. And it doesn't get any easier this week with Hawkins and Cameron. So I'm not saying it's you know written in the stars that they're going to get smashed this week. They just need to play their best performance of the year to avoid getting smashed. I think this will be a tough day. I'll probably... I'll probably say maybe seven goals. Maybe that's conservative. It could get worse because Geelong are really good. And North are not playing without spirit. They're not, you know, they're not a hopeless case at the moment by any stretch. I'm just sort of giving my honest thoughts about how I think this game's going to go. I think this is a tough game for most away teams, let alone a winless North Melbourne who have a short back line. So yeah, we'll say the Cats by 44 points. Then we got the final game of the round. My boys, the West Coast Eagles, taking on Richmond. Um, you know, I think for a neutral, this game might be worth tuning into because I think what we've seen here, and I've been talking up Richmond all year for their spirited performances despite injuries affecting them. Now, I do kind of have this lurking feeling that the longer they go without their stars, the harder it will be to sustain their playing style, but they're getting a big tick from me in terms of the way they're playing, their intensity, their pressure. You know, nearly got a win against St Kilda. Couldn't quite close the game out. They were successful in doing it against Sydney. So this is a pretty decent Richmond side that hasn't had a lot of reward yet. Uh, and it has been a relatively f tough fixture. West Coast, on the other hand, um, you know, a clearly improved performance against Sydney. Now, they didn't beat Sydney like Richmond did, but there was a clear uplift in energy and intensity and skill level is still lacking. But I think West Coast has possibly even looked at what Richmond did to break down Sydney and executed it themselves. And... You know, won the second quarter significantly. We're in front at halftime, massive underdogs, and, uh, you know, went down by 26 points in the end. So I think what Richmond has done so far this year has been better than what West Coast has done, no doubt. But, you know, football's a funny thing. And uh, I know I'm an Eagles fan, so I'm, I'm letting myself be a bit optimistic. It's been a while since I've been optimistic before a game. And I think, I think West Coast can win this game when you factor in, you know, what's the home crowd going to do if we kick a few goals early? So I, I don't think with, without our chances. That being said, I still think Richmond has been better. And I'm going to tip Richmond in this game by 26 points. I'm just hoping for a good game. Another continued performance where we show growth and uh, we get close. Uh, but either way, I just think Richmond probably has a little bit too much in their bag at the moment. I think they've been pretty underrated. So there you go, guys. Those are my predictions for round five. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Upset of the round, I said probably Hawthorne over Gold Coast. I still can't really put into words why I think they're going to win. Game of the round is tough. There's a few fixtures in here that could be good games. Port Frio could be a good game. It might not be. West Coast for Richmond might be an interesting game. It's not going to be a high standard game, but I think it could be a real good arm wrestle. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Uh, but other than that, probably not some real rip snorters. Maybe GWS and St Kilda, actually. G GWS and St Kilda is probably my game of the round. And Hawthorne to beat Gold Coast is my upset of the round. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate you staying tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.